Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing kind of a sort of a deep dive into the 12 volt high power connector for the NVIDIA RTX 40 series. So this is going to be a video all about 12 volt high power. So that's your 12 plus 4, 16 pin, PCI 5.0, part of the ATX 3.0 spec. So we're going to try to understand some of the reasons why these connectors are a bad design and why places like Northridge Fix continue to see card connector meltdowns, particularly with the RTX 4090. Now, it's not exclusive to the RTX 4090. The RTX 4080, there have been some reports of it happening on that card as well, although based off of my own math that I've done on these two cards, I think the only way it could possibly happen on the RTX 4080 is either due to extreme error in how the cable is inserted or extreme overclocking on the RTX 4080, which would require it to be pushed well beyond the 320 watt TDP. And we all know that power equals voltage times current. So if your power is 600 watts, and your voltage is 12 volts, that's going to be 50 amps. Now the thing about 50 amps is, the thing about 50 amps is that this is divided across six pins because the 12 plus four pin, as the name implies, there are 12 pins and there are four sideband sense wires. The 12 pins, six of them are your 12 volt pins and the other six are your ground pins. So only six of these will take the full 12 volts, which will carry the heavy current from the power supply into the graphics card. So if you want to figure out that number, you would take 50 amps and divide it by six. So if we do the current per pin, we would come out to 8.3 amps somewhere around there. And that is the rating, that is the current draw at the limit of 600 watts, which is what the cable is rated for. Now we're not going to talk about safety margin, we're not going to talk about being overbuilt, right? What we can show is if the, if the current pin is rated for 8.5 amps, you can do 8.5 times six pins times 12 volts, you can come out to a total at 8.3 amps, total wattage equals 612 watts. Why? Because 12 volts times six pins times 8.3 amps, which is the current power per pin, or I wish you'd say times 8.5, which is the lower of these two design specifications here, is 612 watts. So this is under, this is typically a measurement under ambient temperature. Now realistically, ambient temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. However, things change when you run the graphics card under heavy load because you have a game running or a benchmark program or something that's causing the GPU to run at its TDP limit which will generate a lot of ambient heat around the cable. On top of that, this, this is considered a bundle of pins because they're in relatively close proximity to each other. So you're going to have a pretty substantial derating factor that combined with the fact that the cable may have been plugged in and unplugged and plugged back in a couple of times. That's why there's a limit to the number of mating cycles for these connectors, typically around 20. You get 20 attempts to plug the cable in. After that, you should probably replace the cable because it's probably a little bit compromised at that point in terms of its effectiveness. Tin could have scraped off the terminals. Um, the connectors could be slightly bent. That could result in poor connection, loose connection. There could be dust or debris inside the connector, like dust. So you could get carbon buildup when it's running at high temperature. That could also further increase the resistance, further leading to a feedback loop of bad things happening over a long period of time. So if we want to use a more conservative factor 
to apply a kind of a, a limit, if you will, to the amount of current, we could say we can impose or assume or impose a D rating factor of 80%. Typically in electronics, I would say this is a decent D rating factor to give to this device, considering the fact that it's going to be in high ambient operating temperature under load and uh, there's close proximity of the pins. So that would mean that in reality, the current, if it's rated for 8.5 amps times 0.8, which is the percentage, you're going to get a much lower number. So you're only going to be able to achieve around 6.8 amps per pin. That is significantly less than what the actual spec is. And this is what I would consider a more realistic specification for the current value of each of these pins on the 12 volt high power connector. So if we do the math, 6.8 times 12 times six, that gives us 489 watts. So about 400, we can say, Approximately 490 watts is the safe everyday upper limit, you can say the 12 volt high power connector. So if we do the math for the 4090 at its actual TDP, which is not 600 watts, it's actually 450 watts, we would have to work our way backwards. So we would have to do 450 watts divided by 12 volts divided by six pins. And that is going to be 6.25 amps. So 6.25 amps is the maximum current draw per pin when the 4090 is running at the maximum TDP of 450 watts. So you can see uh, what that implies is that the actual limit of the TDP, 6.25 amps, is still less than the typical, after derating at 80%, the 6.8 amps that the pin is supposed to be able to handle. So, there's not a whole lot of margin in there if you look at that. You know, that's way less margin of error compared to the old 8-pin. And this is the reason why I feel like these cables are melting down uh, out of the blue, randomly. And you, as the end user, have no idea when it's going to happen. And you can try as you might. It'll still happen unless you power limit the card and you don't allow it to run over 450 watts, I should say. So if you run it stock and you have good airflow through your case, you probably don't have anything to worry about. Assuming you also have not unplugged and plugged back in and unplugged and plugged back in the cable more than 20 times because at that point your, your connector is probably compromised. You probably want to get a new cable. Um, just to be safe. But other than that, uh, if we compare the 4080 or the 4080 Super, you'll see that it's much safer and far less likely to run into this problem because the 4080 has a TDP of 320 watts. This applies to the 4080 Super as well. So if this is 300 that, we that will be divided by 12 volts, divided by six pins, you get 4.4 amps repeated. So this is the typical limit of the 4080 and 4080 Super's current draw per pin. So much, much safer than the 4090. As you can see, it doesn't run anywhere near the 6.25. This, this herein lies the reason as to why the 4090 is the most common card that runs into the melted connector because it's current draw even under stock with an unlocked frame rate at 1440p or 4k it's going to be pulling a lot of amperage and that's so close to the limit if you have high ambient temperature which means the 
the heat from the graphics card is radiating to the connector. The connector is typically 30, 30 Celsius over ambient temperature. So if the ambient is 20 degrees Celsius, you add 30 to that, it's only 50 degrees Celsius. That means if the cable exceeds 50 degrees Celsius, it could be compromised at some point. So you really need to have good ambient. If you have bad ambient, if your ambient temperature is like close to 30 degrees, which for those that don't know, in Fahrenheit, that's like in the 80s, that's like 85, 86, then no one really would be running an ambient of that hot as far as I know. But if they were, they would be far more likely to run the risk of a meltdown situation with a 4090 uh, because your derating factor might be even worse. Uh, this also, this, it also takes into account things like dust. Dust in the connector could cause carbon buildup and when that burns up under heavy heat, that can deposit more uh, carbon or it could like leave a blast stain uh, on the tin or, or directly on the copper. If the tin is scratched away from unplugging the cable and multiple plug-in cycles, for example. So all kinds of things like that can lead to this meltdown scenario for this, for this uh, poorly designed connector, as far as I'm concerned. I really think that they're going to need to replace it uh, with the next generation because this connector is not good. Possibly some of the reasons for the failure on these cables could be the high temperature with, that will impose a derating factor on that so-called 8.5 amps or 9.5 amps. So it's really more like 6.8 amps. So on the 4080 that shouldn't be a problem because this doesn't go, this typically doesn't really go that much above 300 watts while gaming. Um, 4090 is a completely different story though. Just to kind of show the derating factor on these, if we assume, if we do the math, right, so the 12 volt high power supposedly is rated for 9.5 amps. I don't know how much I believe that. I tend to believe that it's actually 8.5 amps. But if you take the official number and you apply a derating factor of about 80%, so that would be 0.8 times 9.5 amps, that means that realistically these can pull around at max, they're rated for potentially only 7.6 amps. So, and that's that's kind of being generous. If it were up to me, you know, I would grade these more strictly and I'd probably use a more conservative value of 8.5 amps with a derating factor on average about 80% of that, so that's 6.8 amps. So if we take into account that, then looking at the 4090, the 4090 can probably go to around 6.25 amps. So you're not really, there's not a whole lot of margin for error there uh, with this. So um, yeah, I really don't like this connector. I feel like this connector probably needs a full redesign or they just need to scrap it and go back to the 8-pin for the next generation of GeForce cards. It just It just seems like bad news all around. And the only way to fix this is either to add a second one so that you can load balance across them. But that's kind of impractical because think about you have to include two adapters and if you do that not very many power supplies will have eight eight pins available. But I'll though realistically they can get away with only like four eight pins or so. So I don't know. They're going to have to really revise this setup. I mean, these numbers are just not good. These are not good current ratings. Being so close, you know, we're like, what, 0.6 away from the maximum. The typical maximum, I guess what I would consider the realistic maximum, if you account for the temperature, the hot temperature around the connector, you know, that could be considered a derating factor. Um, the age of the connector, how many times the user has unplugged and plugged back in the connector because there can be foreign debris that gets in there, like dust. So carbon buildup can occur as well. 
So that'll re result in higher resistance. So the point is, there's a lot of bad things with this connector that I think uh, it's just kind of bad news. So those of you that have not upgraded, uh, you're probably going to want to either skip the 40 series generation altogether or go to AMD because uh, AMD completely dodged a bullet on not using this connector and there's really nothing to worry about if, you, if you're someone who wants peace of mind or you're gonna have to have some elaborate setup where you never let this connector get that hot that's that's easier said than done when you're playing a game and there's all this hot air surrounding it coming off the GPU so so anyway guys hope you found this video insightful if you have any questions or comments on what to do if you have the 4090 this also applies to 3090 Ti but the 3090 Ti as far as I know actually had three separate rails to load balance more evenly across the six pins which is why the 3090 Ti rarely had this problem so if you guys have any comments uh, please leave them down below and I'll try to answer them when I have the time with that being said Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.